A Form 4 student stabs a teacher in the Yaoundé Centre region of the country. This will be one of our top stories in this newscast. And away from that, some political parties say they would boycott the upcoming uh, twin elections uh, come February the 9th, 2020. In this newscast, we have this and more. Good evening and thanks for joining us on this other edition of the news on Equinox uh, Television. And we told you on the top stories that we shall be taking you to the center region of the country with these images in a brief. Shocking indeed, it happened today in the school premises in uh, Yawundi, precisely the center region of uh, the country where a Form 4 student of the French subsystem of education has today been apprehended in Yawundi after he reportedly stopped so that he's uh, a teacher. The incident of called at the Lycée Classic of Colbison Ayoundé after the deceased Mats Chichu called to other the students of age of 15 would recall who was manipulating his phone during lecture hours. Report outlined that the student got hold of a white arm uh, which he used to stab his teacher who confiscated his phone. The deceased teacher is a young male mathematics a teacher. And we talk something else in this uh, newscast uh, over zealous and eager to please state officials to serve as a major obstacle to the normal uh, functioning of the National Commission on uh, uh, Human Rights and Freedom. The year just uh, ended and evaluations have been made in uh, Yawundi precisely. Smajik and Gabriel tells us a lot more about this 27th session of the commission in uh, Yawundi. Even though it was a gathering meant to adopt the program of activities and budget to effectively carry out these activities by the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedom, it was an occasion for the chairperson of this rights institution to lash out the difficulties faced in 2019. According to Dr. Chemuta Divine Banda, the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedom is understaffed, making it difficult for them to sufficiently pay attention to human rights violations on the field. Also, they had insufficient funding, which limited the holding of statutory meetings and sufficient follow-up of human rights promotion on the field. With the start of the new year, the chairperson of the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedom is hoping that things will change. The intention is to continue improving upon our human rights culture in Cameroon. We've already laid a good foundation and uh, regrettably we had some setbacks for three years now going, almost reversing what we achieved. But we're hoping that, as I prayed in my conclusion, this year 2020 could be a year in which we'll come back to a situation of normalcy in our country. Though keeping their hopes alive, the commission says the quota given to them on the national budget is very insignificant and might be a handicap for the results expected at the end of the new year. Uh, we indicated that we need more means to be on the field, uh, active on the field. We need more means. And I challenge you journalists to take a look at the budget that they give to the commission. Take a look at, take a look at it. Talking about the Anglophone crisis, the chairperson of the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedom says the holding of the major national dialogue showed there was a problem and a leeway to getting the solution. The major national dialogue helped us to understand that there's a problem. And if you understand there's a problem, that's already halfway to solving the problem. Notwithstanding the limited means at their disposal, the commission is hoping to enhance its work on the field. 
And while moves are taken nationwide to ensure peace across the National Triangle, the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party, opposition party on its part, says it would keep promoting the boycott of the twin elections come February the 9th, 2020, if matters are not resolved in the English-speaking regions of the country. Meantime, the ruling party, course, would say on Cameroonians to keep away from violence. We have details in this write-up by Armstrong for Sander. As we all know, the security context in some regions of the country is peculiar. In my capacity as the agent of the government, what we can never accept or tolerate are statements like, I will not participate in the elections, and I will do everything possible to stop other Cameroonians from exercising their civic rights. That is when the state will display its might against who so ever shall attempt to create disorder before, during, and after the twin elections. Regardless of their social status, troublemakers shall be dealt with firmly and squarely in accordance with the law of the laws of the Republic. This declaration of Minister like Paul Atanganji of Territorial Administration has not left Cameroonians indifferent. Responding to a portion where the minister warned against attempts from individuals or political parties, to discourage Cameroonians from voting come February 9, 2020. The Cameroon Renaissance Movement's political party says it will not back down. The party is determined to continue with what it calls a mission to educate Cameroonians on the weaknesses of the current electoral code and the security atmosphere of Cameroon, which they say are factors Cameroonians must know as they head to the polls come February the 9th. So Barista Fiden Jumesi of the CRM party thinks the party is within its role to campaign for a boycott, given the watchdog principle of the opposition and the need to inform citizens on how state affairs are managed. The legal mind believes a massive boycott by Cameroonians will send a strong message to the government on the weaknesses of the electoral code. Fidel Jumesi, however, insists that the CRM will not stop anybody from voting and Cameroonians have the right to choose to follow the boycott call or go to the polls as demanded by the government. Within the ruling CPT and party rank, officials think Cameroonians must remain Republican despite diverging opinions. Empêcher party officials like César Honoré Ngomo say citizens must distance themselves from si acts that can provoke violence and tarnish the image of the country. To Honoré Ngomo, patriots must join hands to say no to fake news and every act that counters the development of Cameroon. The anti-campaign intensifies in Cameroon as days narrow to the February 9 municipal and legislative elections. And we'll recall that Minister Paula Tanganji of uh, Territorial Administration while exchanging with governors yesterday in the nation's political capital emphasized on security aspects during the twin polls come February the 9th. Meantime, he said any violence and disruptions will be dealt with by the state. Here is an extract of Paula Tanganji. As we all know, the security context in some regions of the country is peculiar. In my capacity as the agent of the government in the electoral process, it is incumbent on the Minister of Territorial Administration through administrative authorities to provide electorate with appropriate security measures during the anxiously awaited February 9 elections. In fact, the head of state's directives are very clear. Elections must take place in all, all over the national territory. That is, in all the 10 regions, 58 divisions, and 360 subdivisions. And this should be in complete safety and serenity. On the 31st of December 2019, the head of state was formal on this, and I quote, security measures have been put in place for all citizens to be able to exercise their right to vote all over the territory. These measures shall be reinforced if need be, end of quote. Electoral boycott is clearly anti-development practice and its advocacy is anti-constitutional and anti-republican. Despite the wayward attitude of some political leaders who advocate boycott of the twin elections, 
the state respects their choice because we are in a democratic society where people are free to choose whether to participate or not in elections. What we can never accept or tolerate are statements like, I will not participate in the elections and I will do everything possible to stop other Cameroonians from exercising their civic rights. That is when the state will display its might against who so ever shall attempt to create disorder before, during, and after the twin elections. Regardless of their social status, troublemakers shall be dealt with firmly and squarely in accordance with the law of the laws of the Republic. Minister Paul Tangonji of Territorial Administration there speaking, and we talk something else in this newscast, talking agriculture, cocoa farmers and looming the Mungo division of the littoral region of the country sea without government subventions and non-increase in the price of a kilogram of the cashew crop. I do you to will never be motivated to invest in the agricultural domain. We we'll recall the uh, hoping that government raises cocoa prices so they can maximize enough profit and ameliorate the living conditions in and out of the country. We have details with you, Innocent Aze. Unemployment is on the rise. Governments had on several occasions urged the youths to invest in agriculture. But denizens in Loom in the Mungo division of the Little Wild region who grow cocoa, for instance, say lack of government subventions and other supports have scared investment in agriculture. What farmers need here in Loom a subvention from the state. Without that, farmers cannot cope because we need at least uh, monies, at least to to carry on with uh, activities in farm. We need uh, fungicide. We need insecticide. If the price per kilogram is reducing, it will discourage the youth. But if it increases, it will encourage the youth. We encourage most of them to enter into farming. Constant slashing of the price of a kilogram of cocoa, according to them, does not motivate youths to invest in the agricultural sector. This has also made life difficult as they cannot maximize enough profit that will help ameliorate their standard of living. We have a problem because when we are asking those people to reduce the, the, the price of drugs, they are telling us that the price of drugs have no relation with the cocoa, the price of the cocoa. But we now, we are thinking that it is the government to make the effort to harmonize or to make sure that the price of the product that we are buying should also reduce because the price of cocoa has reduced. Or if they don't want the price of the products uh, to reduce, they can raise the price of the cocoa per kilogram. Though the price of a kilogram of cocoa has improved this year as compared to the previous, the cocoa farmers believe the government can do better than this. Last year we were selling at 900, 950, but this year it has gone even one to, to 1,200 1, francs, which it has improved. But if it go up to around 1,800, uh, I think it would be better as compared to the price of the products. But if it is only that, it remains like that, we are not going to be happy because it means that the farmer is always suffering. Even the buyers, they are also suffering. With government's better positive actions, these farmers in Loom believe Adeline youths will be instigated to invest in the agricultural sector. And we talk something else, taking you out of our uh, frontiers, we make a uh, learn stop or taking you to France, where the G5 South member countries and uh, heads of state of uh, France, Emmanuel uh, uh, Macron, have met with the uh, stakeholders to discuss the situation in the G5 uh, Sahel region. The focal point is to counter terrorism, as you tell us, Immaculate Fogwe. French President Emmanuel Macron hosted counterparts from the five Sahel countries, which are Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania and Niger to discuss their shared determination in fighting terrorist groups operating in the Sahel. President Macron's meeting with Mali's Ibrahim Boubacar Keter, Burkina Faso's rock Mark Christian Kambure, Niger's Muamadu Isufu, Mauritania's Mohamed Oud Gazwani and Chad's Idris Debi was meant to step up efforts in countering terrorist attacks and bring about a swift solution to the crisis in Libya, which falls instability in the Sahel. In the course of the summit, they came up with the following resolutions. Fighting against terrorism, 
by concentrating their immediate military efforts on the three border regions under the joint command of the Bakhan Force and the G Sengsile Joint Force, strengthening the military's capabilities of the states in the region as they welcomed the partnership of friends in Germany who expressed their wish of supporting the military with practical training, logistical support and equipment for the G Seng country's armies. Support for the return of the state and administration on the territory, particularly with penal and judicial systems, which are essential for the return of the rule of law. And finally, development assistance, which is meant to support them in tackling humanitarian challenges for internally displaced persons and refugees. And that does it for national and international news. Up next, Talking Point. Welcome back. And on set right here with us, we uh, have uh, Kedja Maleng Fay, who is here as a political analyst. And with him, we shall ponder on the declarations of Minister of Territorial Administration, Minister Paul Atangaji, exchanging with governors of the 10 regions of the country yesterday in Yawundi and emphasizing on security aspects uh, in the troubled regions, most especially in cause of the Twin Poles. Welcome on board, Equinox. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Greetings to all uh, the viewers of uh, Equinox TV, especially those in Southern Cameroon. Thank you for accepting our invitation. And you definitely listened to uh, the extract of uh, uh, the Minister Paul Tanganji of Territorial Administration. Uh, what really gripped your mind in it? You see, um, nothing was there that was interested because, uh, you know, Paul Atanganji is the Cameroonian that has always been saying that there is no uh, Anglophone problem. And uh, some few, uh, some couples of days ago, he also came out clearly to say there is no uh, crisis, there is no humanitarian crisis in Cameroon. And uh, that's someone that is in charge of uh, maybe uh, uh, supplying humanitarian ones to humanitarian people that need humanitarian needs. But you see him saying that there is no Anglophone uh, crisis, so there is really a problem. So I was not expecting something different from him. I respect him. He's a state uh, minister. I respect him for that. But I am just talking based on his outing. How can he say there is no Anglophone problem? When we talk about Anglophone problem, we are talking about historical defamation, economic exploitation, political domination, and social discrimination. When we even talk about economic exploitation, can you imagine that the Southwest region in which uh, the petrol is there, the CDC is there, that produces, that provides a chunk to the national GDP of Cameroon, and when the national budget for investment came on, can you imagine that the Southwest region has the same budget with a division in the South region of the country? So that simply just shows the economic exploitation that uh, Anglophones are crying in this country that they are being exploited. So those are just an example which I just want to bring up with regards to this national budget so that people should be aware and know the economic exploitation that Cam uh, Southern Cameroonians are crying for. And Heaton had a lot more about the security aspect in the troubled regions, most especially the north and southwest uh, regions of the country. It's true security should be ensured, would say should be ensured uh, in all the 10 regions during the Twin Pools and that was the priority talk of uh, the minister yesterday and the governors. Uh, that is what Yaoundé believe. They believe that if they march down their military down to uh, the northwest and southwest region, the people will come out and vote. But that is where now the people of southern Cameroon will keep on saying this. This is not an issue that you think you can use military. If 700 gendarmes have been deployed, why were they not deployed to ensure that children go back to school? Now, this south, these 700 gendarmes that are going to the northwest and the southwest, they are citizens of Cameroon and they have as their fundamental human right to vote. So are these 700 gendarmes going to the northwest and southwest to increase the or inflate the numbers of voters so that they will tell us that uh, vote elections was okay, thousands voted? Those are the questions that we are asking. Now, those in the bushes, let us talk about our women that are in the bushes that use grass as their part in the, in the bushes. They give birth to our young ones and they are welcomed by animals in the bushes. Would they leave the bushes to come and vote? Would all those 700 gendarmes be able to go into all the maybe 64 uh, subdivisions 
and bring these people out in the bushes to vote? And when they bring them out to vote, would they guarantee their security after elections? Maybe that's the reason why we have a bulky number of this uh, uniform men deployed to the regions. To when ensure that when you talk school. about 700 gendarmes and a population of over 4 million and you look at the ratio, then I don't see how bulky it is. If they could have sent maybe 4 million gendarmes with um, over 4 million population, to have us a ratio of one is to one, then I will tell you that there will be maximum security for elections to take place. But the issue is, would this election, would this gendarme be able to secure the people? It is 100% clear that the election is free. It is 100% free, but it is 100% like, uh, should I say it is 0% uh, because we say election is supposed to be free and fair. It is 100% free, but it is 0% fair because now these are elections in which we vote our representative. There is decentralization and we need to vote our mayors to be able to manage our immediate domestic problems. And thousands are displaced in the eight regions of Cameroon. Thousands are in Nigeria as a refugee. Thousands are in the Northwest, internally displaced in the Northwest and internally displaced in the Southwest. Like, for instance, if you are a citizen maybe from Manfe and you see yourself in Boya because of insecurity, you are internally displaced in the Northwest and Southwest region before being internally displaced in the eight region. Now, the question is, looking at all this, I don't even see myself seeing an uh, elections taking place there huge free. I don't see it. I don't see the possibilities. Are you saying it's not necessary to ensure security in those regions? For it is necessary force? to ensure security to the citizen. It is the right of the government and it is the fundamental human right of citizens to be protected by their government. Yes, but the intention in which they are going there and with the presence of our men in the bushes with guns, then it already bring out a scenario of an open confrontation or maybe a war. And all these military men, they have their gun and they have their uh, bulletproof. And those guys in the bushes, they have their guns too. What guarantee now the common man, which is who is supposed to go and vote, what guarantee the common man, which is supposed to go and exercise his right to franchise? So that is where the bone of contention is. And the question now to these, we have some opposition side political parties who are taking Atanganji's declaration yesterday in Yaoundé as a threat, most especially, and they say they will keep ensuring or campaigning for the boycott of the twin elections. How do you appraise this? You see, we have political parties that I appraise them for standing to say there cannot be a fair elections in southern Cameroon, in the northwest and the southwest. I appraise them, especially those that did not go for presidential elections and they are still standing their grounds that they will not go for municipal and parliamentary elections. But I have a question mark for those parties that went in for presidential elections and they are playing us games now to say they don't want to go in for municipal and parliamentary elections. Why did they go for the presidential in the first place? Those are the political parties that I will openly say they are taking the, 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 the what is happening in the northwest and southwest region for their political games. But when you see parties like uh, PAP, you see parties like that of Edith Kabangwala that they have stood their ground that would the court of uh, the electoral code, it is a clear fact that with that electoral code there will be no fair elections and that's why they did not go in for presidential and that's why they are not going for parliamentary and uh, municipal. It shows some legitimacy in them from the onset of boycotted. But when someone go for presidential and come back to use the anglophone problem as uh, for political gain and to have much followers, then it is a problem. It means and some uh, political parties are using the anglophone problem just for your personal yes, interest. Why would you go in for presidential election under the same crisis in the Northwest region, under the same electoral code, and when it comes to municipal election, you say you will not go in because there's a problem in the Northwest. Maybe and the they just, they just, the, the, the presidential elections unfair. That's the reason why they're, they're backing off. And they also use also what is happening in the Northwest and Southwest region as a reason too. 
So how will you analyze that they brought in their fact, they brought in their issue. I will not want to stand only on that to say, okay, seeing the election was unfair with regard to presidential election. If they could have given that one point, that we are not going in for elections because the electoral code is not favorable. That is why if we were treated unfairly in the presidential elections, so we will not go in for the municipal election. That is what Pani John Fundi did. And that's it. He did not use other crises not to go. Pani John Fundi, which uh, really, I feel hurt today when I saw Pa say in Yaoundé that he is uh, almost an internally displaced person. When I even want to say this, I feel like crying. Today, I can stand on this platform and express that this freedom of speech and say where the government is going wrong, thanks to Nijon Fundi, that stood for democracy and freedom of speech. But today, seeing him in Yaoundé, it hurts me like a, a, as a young man growing. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kedia Malangfi. You're a political analyst and you've been the guest on Talking Point. Thanks for accepting the invitation. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here to talk to all Cameroonians, uh, but with positive intention for na uh, nation building, for the growth of our nation, especially all those that maybe they are in the bushes, they can't get us, those that are internally displaced in the Northwest and Southwest region, those that are internally displaced out of uh, out in the other eight region, especially uh, my people from Bamisin, which they are going through hard times. Thank you so much. And there we received uh, Kedio Malangfi, political analyst. That does it for this pack of the news on Equinox Television. We'll meet you tomorrow, same time, same vessel. Have a lovely evening.